Can you believe it? It's the first release of Home Assistant for 2026, and I've been checking it out to see what we're all getting in January. There's some nice new functionality, along with some great ongoing improvements and a good selection of new integrations. In this video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know about this release before you jump in and upgrade. Hey everyone, my name's Simon and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek, a channel that's all about Home Assistant and smart home technology. So the first release of Home Assistant for 2026 is nearly here and boy that came around quick didn't it? It was only the other day I did my end of year review of Home Assistant for 2025 and yet here we are looking forward to the new year. Releases around holidays are generally a lot smaller than usual and this month is no exception as the Home Assistant team have been taking a well-earned rest with their families. However, there are still some nice updates in this release to look forward to, including quite a few new integrations. As I always mention, this is a beta release of Home Assistant and as such, it can be subject to change before the final release with features potentially dropped or added at the last minute. I'll put a link to the release notes in the description of this video if you want to read about the update in more detail. So let's get going and take a look at what's in store for the January release of Home Assistant. First off, and we've got an update to the home dashboard that was introduced recently. So now you have summary cards at the top of the dashboard. As you can see here on my test system, it looks a little bit different to my live one. And the idea is that, is that you'll get things like uh, lights, climate, weather, security, etc. shown here, just like in the example on the release notes. Worth noting that this is just for mobile and that the desktop experience will stay as it is. There's now a new devices page. So when you remove devices from an area, uh, kind of rather than them going into the ether, now you can access them via the devices area. In the December release of Home Assistant, we got to see the new labs feature. And one of the items released for that was the purpose specific triggers and conditions. Well, for January, they have been updated again to include a lot more trigger types, which hopefully means everyone finds it a bit more useful. In this release, we have uh, new trigger types for buttons, climate, device tracker, humidifier, light, lock, scene, siren, and update. And as you can see here, there's quite the range of functionality for these trigger types. The settings page has also been updated with a new area for protocol dashboards, something which wasn't as prominent as it should have been apparently. So as you can see here in the release notes, this is what the different protocols will look like. And on my test system, this is what it looks like on the settings page. The tags option was already present in the settings menu and it was a bit odd that it was just by itself. So I think this is a nice update just to make things a bit clearer for users. I've also noticed a few other UI changes whilst I've been playing around with the update. They're all really minor and none of them are mentioned in the release notes, but they just tidy things up just a little bit. Integrations are such a key part of Home Assistant. They're what sometimes enables that old device you have to be part of your smart home. And as a Home Assistant user, you'll want to make sure you keep up to date on the changes every month. So go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons so that you don't miss my next video. So starting things off, and if you've got an Air Patrol air conditioning unit controlled through Air Patrol Wi-Fi, well, now you can control those via Home Assistant. E-Gauge energy monitors, uh, which are used uh, with solar installations most commonly, they can now be integrated in Home Assistant as well. Flus Plus, which is something I've never heard of, but uh, it seems to be a way of opening your garage or gate uh, via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, quite an interesting looking product to be honest. Well, let me know in the comments if you're using that uh, because there's now an integration in Home Assistant for that. There's an integration for Fish Audio uh, that's been added. So now you can use the text-to-speech service to generate natural sounding speech in Home Assistant. And if you have a Fresnap uh, GPS tracker on your pet, well, now you can use Home Assistant to track the activity. 
There's a new integration for Homelink devices, so now you can trigger routines from the comfort of your vehicle. And the Watt Vision Plus Smart Heating System has been added to Home Assistant, allowing control of individual heating zones. And finally, there's an internal integration for WebRTC that's been added to provide camera streaming functionality in Home Assistant. Not a bad list of new integrations given the time of the year, but if you want to read the full list of improvements, then don't forget to check out the link in the description of this video. We've also got a number of integrations moving up the quality scale in this release. So it's starting off with Platinum and we have KNX and Unify Protect. Moving to Silver and we have uh, Autoco, uh, SFR Box and Watergate. And reaching Bronze, we have a GrowWatch server and TP-Link Omada. It's great to see all the hard work from those contributing being recognised in the releases to make these integrations better for everyone. As for notable changes this release, well, we start off with something for those of you who are monitoring an oil tank or similar storage with kind of like a slow flow rate. Uh, so now there's a new gallons per day unit of volume uh, flow rate that's been added, which should help with tracking your daily consumption. I think that's going to be super useful for a lot of people based on some of the posts I've seen in the community. Hit the like button if that's going to be something you'll be using. If you've got Matter speakers, then now there's support for volume controls. The statistics graph card has a link to the history panel now in its header, allowing you to go directly to the history with the same entities and time range pre-selected for you. And for the picture elements card, if you're using the state badge element, well, now you can set a custom name option, which gives you a bit more flexibility in dashboard designs. There's just a handful of breaking changes for this release. So starting off with Coolmaster, if you've got any automations using MED, then you'll need to change that to medium as that's now what the uh, integration uses. The tail scale integration has had supports hair pinning removed uh, as apparently it's no longer tracked and therefore it's always returning null. Unify protect select entity state values have changed from mixed case to uh, snake case. So if you're checking those values anywhere, then you'll need to update accordingly. Telegram bot has had extra or unused parameters removed from the action for the bot. Um, this is only going to affect users who uh, use undefined parameters. So really time just to check your automations and scripts. And finally, we have vSync, which has had the advanced sleep fan mode change to advanced underscore sleep. So again, updates to your automations and scripts if you're using that. So that's what the 2026.1 release of Home Assistant has for us. A smaller update than usual due to the holidays, but still some welcome additions in the list. What are you looking forward to in this release? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're still building up your Home Assistant Smart Home and you want to take things even further, then check out this next video. It's great for creating brilliant automations quickly and easily. And I go through five amazing examples of what you can do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.